Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Yeah, we stood outside for at least three hours in the cold, but it was so well worth it. Every word was just imbued with so much wisdom and understanding and beauty. I wish you could have made it. Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So join me on the flip as we have a conversation about how to have a resume worth meaningfulness. I'll see you on the flip. Thank you for joining me on the flip. And today I am quite excited about our topic. And I've been meaning to talk about this for a while, but there have been others, uh, more pressing, I guess, topics that have come through. And so today we're going to be talking about a resume of meaningfulness and what that means and why we want to have it. On the A part, I was making reference to a conversation that I had with a friend who had opportunity to go see a beloved author and lecturer that we both enjoy um, up in the area where she lives up north. And I was so envious. Well, not really, but yeah, I was. And we got a chance to finally catch up. And uh, she gave me the details of how it went, what was said, and it was everything that I could have imagined and more. And we came to this conclusion that uh, agreement, because we already had already had our own personal conclusions, that this person has already lived a full life that is worth so much. And the meaningfulness of of what they have done, it speaks and goes way out before them, before they even show up. And I looked at that as a thing of beauty and something that I aspire to have. And just the other day, I was talking to a family member who went and volunteered at a local school to talk to the little kids there. And when I was talking with the family member how, about how it went, I felt that same thing and how this family member is always willing to do do that type of thing, support someone, uh, do a, a, a walk or a run uh, for a great cause. And I was just like, wow, the world needs so many people like you. And I'm very appreciative to be surrounded by those types of people and to be inspired to do likewise by uh, my good company that I'm blessed to be able to keep. And so today, I thought it would be important and necessary for us to get some balance to what we talk about on this podcast. Now, yes, we are all all about the individualism, about mental strengthening, wisdom strengthening, getting the edge, looking for the loopholes, being an alchemist of our own life, destiny, and wisdom, and all of that. But there does also come a time when it just gets to, to be what it is, and that is that we need to start to assemble a resume of meaningfulness. And what do we mean by this meaningfulness? Meaningfulness is in the realm of the immortal. Meaningfulness is how we go about transversing the sea or the ocean. Yeah, that's a better word. The ocean of mediocrity and regularity to the high realms of speciality and uniqueness. You see, when you do things and you become a person of meaning and purpose, and you do things that take on a life of their own to continuously exponentially help others, you become meaningful. And meaningful people become known as remarkable. And we all know that if you are remarkable, 
then you are memorable. And if you are memorable in the right way, long time ago, I did a podcast about the difference between notoriety and nobility. When you become memorable in the right way, you become noble. You become legendary. You become epic. And so having this resume of meaningfulness is the pathway and the catapult and the catalyst to help us to start on the path of legendary status. Now, for you, you might say, oh, my ego does not require legendary status. And you are possibly right. And I'm not going to argue in it, you know, against it. But what I am going to say is that a life well lived is one where it is remembered. And because we only have this short amount of time that is our lifespan on this earth, I believe that we come to this plane of existence for such a time as this to do that very thing, to leave our mark, to leave the place better than we found it, to help those that are coming after us, to be able to see the world in a different way that helps them, that inspires them, and that keeps them going and moving forward and pushing to be the best that they possibly can. And I believe that so much because over and over again, I know I'm personally inspired by people who do miraculous things, who are always on the apex of their game and who are leading the charge just by waking up and just not even having to try to manufacture it, but by the true essence of their character and the habit of their ways are doing memorable things and are building these astounding resumes of meaningfulness. Now, let me say this, that there is a litmus test that I have been playing around with based on what I've been getting in my meditations with wisdom with regards to starting to be very deliberate and direct in uh, certain actions that I take. And I'm going to let you in on that, okay? And that litmus test is the brush-up test, meaning when people brush up against the experience of you, what's the outcome? Do you tend to help? Are you useful? Or do you hinder or worse, make them dependent on you? And the reason why I ask that is because understanding how to get around our blind spots is one of the first things that we can do to help ourselves to go deeper, go harder, go leaner, go go brighter, go it, it, so that we can leave the place better than we found it. And it starts with us starting to be able to correctly assess and see how we interact with others. I've talked about this on other podcasts and you have heard all of the cliches and the sayings, you know, that people truly judge themselves on their intentions, but judge others by their actions. We've talked briefly about the power of your intention and impact. We talked about it yesterday when we talked about tone and mood and how if you are proficient and skilled in these things, how you can control your environment and the people in it. And I want to touch a little bit more on intention and impact. But at this particular moment, I want to just home in on what is the experience of you? Is it memorable? Is it meh or is it where you were just a ghost, a phantasm at most? You were a background character. You were filler for the setting. And I'm not saying that you have to be this powerhouse, impactful person with every encounter. No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that When you start to give attention to something, that's where energy flows. And where energy flows is where you tend to grow. And if we consciously, just by me having this conversation with you, you consciously becoming aware of the power that you have to enact this ability to live a meaningful life, then my gosh, you're going to be amazed at what you're able to do from here on by just Um, endeavoring to do meaningful things that have great impact on people. Uh, So what is the limits test that you can say happens when the average person that you interact with 
has an encounter of you? Do you help them? Meaning, do you have that servant servitude to humble yourself, to help and assist someone? Are you useful to them? Do you become a tool for their use to help them get ahead in their endeavors and the things that they want to do that you're skilled at helping? Or do you hinder them with naysaying and unasked for opinions that try to dream still and keep them in a place that makes you comfortable or worse yet? Do you make them dependent on you where you take away their agency and you try to impose your will on their life to make them think as you do and that only those who think like you are welcome in your space without hostility? And this is not an indictment and if you feel Uh, some kind of way about it, that might be your own personal conviction happening. But if you're like, oh, okay, this is cool. Didn't think of it this way. I can go and look at it now. You're in the right spot. And that means that you're teachable, you're open, and you're humble to be able to embrace this wonderfulness. Now, yes, we definitely talk about dark psychology. I don't like that word, but that's how they put it. Uh, we talk about uh, loopholes. We talk about shortcuts and, and all of these different things that happen in our neurobiology. And I hope that when we talk about it, we always talk about it when you get the intention, the impression that we're talking about it for the benevolence of others and never for uh, anything harmful. And so because of that, I want to say that when you look at people who have a resume of meaningfulness, the first thing you get after you are in awe with all the things that they're able to pull off with the same amount of time that the average person has on this earth, you start to learn that they have subtle influence. And some of them are masterful in their execution of this subtle influence, meaning that they have the ability to walk side by side with the beast and be in total peace with themselves, meaning that they have a harmony within that helps them to have a harmony without when they're dealing with people of all different walks of life and temperament. Excuse me, it's kind of like having the grand negotiator come in and get the hostages released. You see, the person of meaningfulness, they have an air that has been granted to them and I I think stamped on them because of this unspoken realm of power that they exist in, where because of all of the things that they have done, all of the wonderful actions and events they have set in motion and all the rippled effects of benefit that people are experiencing, that they walk around with this aura of delightfulness, that people want to please them. People want to be in their good graces. And I'm going to tell you, if you've ever gotten a chance to uh, go and sit in the presence of people who have a resume of meaningfulness, it's an experience that is hard-pressed to try to describe adequately. There are people who are counted as everyday saints. There's this one lady out of India that she is a mother and she gives the best hugs. And people wait in line for hours and sometimes days to simply get a hug from her. And it doesn't matter how long, as long as her human body allows her to sit there or stand and hug people, she hugs them, and she doesn't rush them along. She hugs them. She connects with them. She looks them in the eyes, and sometimes she grabs them to her breast and just cries with them and and says, "My child, my child." And I'm I'm, I'm I get choked up even thinking about her because of how meaningful her life is and the service, the humility, the help. That she, does, that she is for so many people and how she is able to leave people better than she found them. People come out of there with a lighter step. They come out of there with a renewed purpose. They come out of there with, with a, a full tank of hope to go out and keep fighting the good fight. And then there are other people that I've had opportunity to go and listen to who their 
their resume of meaningfulness is that every time I sit under their tutelage, fireworks of excitement and curiosity and insight and new innovations pop within my mind by the very projection of their words. They cause me to look at things in a different way than I've ever considered. They cause me to get excited about things that up until then were just background noise in a fuzzy distillation. They cause me to want to go out and seize my world with a new and more and a firmer handle. And I'm so excited that I'm able to experience them as well. And they serve as the useful tools that I am able to use to carve out more meaning in my life. You see, part of the reason I come to you each day is, first of all, I really enjoy talking with you. I really enjoy having the impetus to go and search and and study and read and meditate and, and seek out wisdom to share with you because I am determined to live a life of meaningfulness as well. I am determined to be that person that when you have the experience of me, I was there to help you. I was there to be useful to you. I was there to hinder you from making foolish mistakes that are avoidable. And I was there to help you become the most independent you you can be. And hopefully having that and Even now with the few people that I've heard from that have said something to that effect, it helps me. It is my gasoline. It is my fuel that helps me to continue to go. And I just laughed internally when I said gasoline because I'm like in about another year, gasoline is going to be obsolete when it comes to the average use of transportation where we're moving over to energy. So if you're listening to this in the future, and you laugh at that. Just know that I laughed at it right now, too. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, getting back to this wonderfulness of why we, we we really want a resume of meaningfulness. Now that I've appealed to you from that side, let me just hit it hard for you on the practical side of what people are always concerned with if you're not independently wealthy. Michelle, what does this do for my bottom line? What does this do for my status? What does this do for my ability to have income to not only take care of myself, but to get an edge, a tweak, to get more? And I will say this, is that a resume of meaningfulness is one that speaks for itself. It's been said that warriors recognize one another and that a lion never has to introduce itself when it comes into a room. Now, I don't know why a lion would be coming into a room, but you get what I'm saying, all right? And so when you do things of meaning, they start to have whispers when you come into a space. Your work and your essence precede you. And they are simply putting together the physicality of you together with the legendariness of you. And because of that, everything you do is influential. And that is why I said earlier that people who have a meaningful life, a cachet of of, uh, goodwill and wealth everywhere they go, they have to be careful with the power that they exude. That's why they excel at subtle influence and that they can do a lot that we can't. You know, um, <laughs> thinking about some of the um, places I've gone and people I've listened to, because, you know, I, I I love a brilliant, sharp mind and uh, being aware of all the soft contracts that we enter into when we have conversation or we sit under the tutelage of people. I am thankful that I have chosen well, I think in whom I've been willing to sit under and listen to and allow to enter into my thoughts and my heart and my processing of my mind. Because with this subtle influence that people of great renown have, they are able to get us to agree with them easier than the average person. And there's something about soft contracts. If you find that when you have a conversation and someone asks you to agree, and even if you subconsciously are nodding with them, a lot of times you're entering into soft contracts. Yes, everything we do matters. And I think 
<laughs> I think that we do ourselves a great mercy because we don't have the filters of everything on. You know, just even in our face, the fact that our eyes, our ocular orbs, those eyes, the physical ones, are able to ignore our nose so that we're not constantly cross-eyed staring at our nose all day is amazing. Or what about the kinesthetic genius of our bodies where we are able to walk without having to look down to gauge how far the ground is from our feet or even run? All of these things that we are naturally, if, if everything is in working order, that we're naturally able to do that we take for granted. And yet and still, we don't realize that something as simple as having conversation with people and allowing them to speak over you and into you, you have to be mindful of what type of information you intake. And because of that, people who have this resume of meaningfulness have earned the right to speak over people. And to get people to enter willingly into these soft contracts with them because they are they are not harmful. They don't hinder them. They don't make them become dependent on them. They don't take them and turn them into nothing more than suckling idiots who can't think for themselves. And that's a real nice thing. But then on the other hand, as a person who is endeavoring to have a resume of meaningfulness. And when it comes down to it, you want to know, well, will it make me money? Will it do this or will it do that? Well, not only will it give you subtle influence that you must use with discretion for the very lives of of the people who are under you, you need to understand that there comes a lot of attention when it comes to people who move in this way. And yes, you will be gifted with a lot of perks. It will be mostly income, reputation, and maybe even uh, some notability and some fame. But understand this, that you must be able to also handle the attention. You see, attention is a concentration of the mind on a sim- sim- single, excuse me, a single object or thought. And when you have this singular concentration of a mind on you multiplied by tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, it becomes a noticeable psychic weight that you must be able to handle. Only people who have been under that kind of weight know the power and the weight of fame. And it can be backbreaking. It can take you out of here. And so with this resume of meaningfulness that I'm talking about and why I'm encouraging you to do it, I'm encouraging you to do it because, yes, if you want, you can become that person who is famous and all of that. But I do want to caution you because with all that fame, there comes a price. It is said that when you are looking at a star and all of the fiery power that is glowing around it, is that that star is pushing all of their heat outward until they burn up. So the coldest spot in a star is in its middle. And do you really want to be someone else's star just for the exchange of a little bit of notoriety? No. Instead, as a person of meaningfulness, who tends to do things that are remarkable, that leave indelible marks on people for the good, they leave them better than they found them, they are a lot of times grafted in to the realm of the beloved. And they don't suffer the scrutiny of a lot of people who are just the famous. You know, think about it. When you look at people, and usually you'll find them in the humanities, you will find them in religion. But when you think of people, think of people that you might consider as a national treasure. There are certain dignities afforded to them that are not afforded to other people who just want to get that money, get that, get, you know, be seen and stuff. And, you know, so if you think of a national treasure, if someone tries to come at them that way to disgrace them, trust and know that society will handle up on that person. And so it is much better to go about building a life's work that is admirable and that is able to be looked upon fondly by others than it is to go and just 
grab up awards and I won this and I did that. And it only really benefited you and a small few who were out to win some type of uh, capitalist award. You know, they, they talk about how only what you do for love will last. And a lot of that is self-love, yes. But it's that self-love that extends to the to the love of you being part of everything. And if you're part of everything, you can be in self-love and you can still love everything. And only what you do for that type of thing is going to last. And so what does it what does it say? What does it profit a man or a woman to gain the world but lose their soul? This is where it's times like this that wisdom comes in to do her wonderful work where she says, instead of building a resume of accolades and awards, build a resume of meaningfulness. The, the meaningfulness will put you into the legendary stratosphere. The awards will put you into a nice, uh, uh, Lord, I, I'm looking right at it, forgive me, a, a nice hall of fame. So would you rather be in the stratosphere of memory and when people invoke your memory long 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 time from now would you rather them be able to say yes i am totally uh feeling this energy i am doing this or would you be like oh they did a lot of nice cool stuff okay cool <laughs> it it to me it is the former, because we are energy, and energy is neither created nor destroyed. And so you cannot tell me that when our energy translates into something else after we expire here, that we don't still get the benefits of what we were able to do with the energy when we were in the life form that we know as who we are right now. And so I'm going to encourage you to look past the running around. Yes, get your physical needs fulfilled. Yes, aspire to have better than you have. You know, yes, update and upgrade your lifestyle living. That is what we do. I am not asking you to live a life of poverty. I'm not asking you to Thomas Aquinas this. I am not. What I'm asking is for you to make a slight little change to start to have a perspective worth attention. Because that is the, in, in these last few minutes, I save this for last because I want to just kind of like take time to really have this stick in your mind as we, you know, finish up our little conversation for the day. And in all of that meaningfulness, you want to have a way of looking at things that is worth other people's attention. When I started this and I talked about uh, the admirable uh, personality that my friend was able to go see in person and, um, and I hung on every word, it's because this person has that very thing. They have proven over and over again that they are always able to dig forth and bring forth a jewel of a perspective that is so worthy of attention that the people in that field our field, have to pause, stop, and marvel at it. And when you start to learn how to look for, suss out, weigh, and try various perspectives to be able to bring one or many that will help other people have the scales of blindness and disillusionment fall from their eyes, that, my dear beloved, is a powerful gift that is given to those in those hollowed halls where you are known throughout in perpetuity, where you are a monumental, epic soul that has come to bless us. When you think about Siddhartha, Buddha, Jesus, the Christ, and you think of all of these different figures, and you think about people who have just... Every time you think of what they've done, Harriet Tubman, and uh, I, I could go on and on, but my time, I'm just looking at this time, just going fast. What I want to say is this. You'll notice that in most of their cases, they had a way of looking at life and finding the best angle to be a win, 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 win all the way around where when they benefited, others benefited. And that litmus test held true. 
It was when we had the ability to brush up against their experience. They helped us. They proved very useful to us. They hindered and even obstructed contrary things from coming to us. And they made us independent so that we could run our race, be stronger and be better for having experienced them. And not only that, In their subtle influence, they were always nudging us to be our best, nudging us to be better, to be more, and to leave leave a legacy like they had before us. And then, so graceful have they been able to handle the attention that we've bestowed upon them so that we could have a, a, a template by which to aspire to in our own life. And so because of that, I'm very thankful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share this wisdom smack with you. And so I'm just going to implore you to please consider starting to carve out a resume of meaningfulness in your own life. Each one reach one. Leave our place better than we found it. And with that, my time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom, with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. Don't forget to please like, subscribe, share, and let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Also, don't forget to check the show notes for uh, information on any books we may mention and how to contact me. And until tomorrow, because this is a daily podcast, I'm going to bid you adieu and thank you for showing up and listening. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.